Good day everybody. Once again we are back together and uh, today we are looking at the hyperbola. Okay, still continuing on functions. Uh, for those of you who are new to the channel, please uh, just uh, subscribe, hit that subscribe button and um, uh, obviously don't even forget to hit that notification bell so that you are alerted every time that you are posting a new lesson. And um, for those of you who may need to get in contact with us for any reason, okay, our, info, uh, our, our email address rather is info at mlungesinkosi.co.za. All right, so um, quickly let's have a look at what we have in store for you uh, for the hyperbola. Okay, so in this case, we've got a general equation of a hyperbola and it is as following, uh, as follows rather, uh, uh, y is equals to a, this is x minus p uh, plus q. Now, uh, just a few things to consider when it comes to the hyperbola. Okay, so first of all, we know that when the value of a is greater than zero now meaning that value over there okay so when a is greater than zero you normally would have now please i want you to note let's say these are our uh, axes so it means that your hyperbola would exist in the first quadrant as well as in the third quadrant okay now, of course, in this case, this is where the P and the Q value is, um, uh, they're, they're both zero, okay? But in this case, uh, if you were to consider your asymptote, uh, your asymptotes, so it would exist, the asymptotes are sort of to the hyperbola. The asymptote behave as though it's a shifted set um, of um, axes, right? Uh, you'll understand that as, as I go on. So in this case, it would uh, be in the first and as well as the third quadrant of your shifted axis, okay? Right. Um, of course, if A is less than zero, okay, so your hyperbola would now exist uh, in the second quadrant, okay? as well as your fourth quadrant okay right now uh, just a few things to note about the um hyperbola they also have axes of symmetry okay so for this hyperbola where we find that the value of p and q are zero of course your axis of symmetry it is symmetrical about the line y is equal to x but it's also symmetrical about the line y is equals to minus x, meaning that when you fold um, the hyperbola right around the line y is equals to x, I wish I could show you uh, graphically. Uh, when you fold it around that line, um, the two graphs should lie exactly on top of each other. But the same is true uh, when I fold it around uh, the other line, actually. I should have made my axes uh, uh, with a different color, okay? Um, so in this case, uh, the axis of symmetry, that is, okay? So around the blue line. So if I fold it around the blue line, uh, the two graphs, um, you know, would lie on top of each other. It means that uh, the one graph on the uh, third quadrant, uh, sorry, on the second quadrant as well as on the fourth quadrant would sort of fold over each other, okay? Um, now, if you look at uh, the graph that we drew, uh, where A is greater than zero, again, okay, symmetrical about that line, Y is equals to uh, minus X, okay, but uh, also symmetrical about the line, let me just draw it in a blue color, Y is equals to uh, X. So, meaning when you fold it around that line, uh, the two graphs should lie exactly on top of each other. Okay, right. So now let's talk about the asymptotes, the P and the Q value. Now in this particular case, uh, the one that I drew here, we said both P and Q are zero. So it means your X and your Y axes behave as the axes of symmetry. Well, as, not axes of symmetry, rather, uh, uh, as your asymptotes. So what are asymptotes? These are lines that the graph never touches, okay? So, let's have a, a quick look uh, at it, 
Okay, so now I'm going to take a, um, a graph and I want us to basically look at a graph, but just another thing to consider. Okay, so when we take, uh, let's say for argument's sake, we know that at the asymptote, um, you know, the graph never touched. So if you considering, okay, I, I, I just want to, uh, um, you know, talk about that quickly. If you're considering, in this case, the values of P and Q, okay, uh, talking about P and Q, in fact, uh, yeah, let me go back to that picture there. So P, okay, would be what we call, uh, in this case, your vertical asymptote, your vertical asymptote. I don't know about you, uh, but I always struggle with vertical and horizontal. You know, some people struggle with left and right. You know, obviously all the time I just try to wave my hands <laughs> to know which one is my left or my right. Uh, so with horizontal and vertical, I don't know about you, but uh, yeah, I, I kind of struggle with that. Okay, so, um, so P would be a vertical asymptote. Now, please remember, vertical is this one here. So meaning for your vertical asymptote here, so we're saying if x is equal to p, so that value p there, note that I am changing the sign, okay? So meaning if I've got x plus 3 for argument's sake, so it means what would be my vertical asymptote? Uh, it would be uh, uh, where x is equal to minus 3, okay? So remember that it changes sign. So it means that my vertical asymptote would be at x is equal to p in this particular case. Right, but what does it mean? Look at our q value. There's our q value over there. So in this case, it means that your horizontal asymptote, so uh, q would be your horizontal asymptote, okay? Right, don't worry, all of this is going to just make sense in a few, all right? So Q is your uh, horizontal asymptote. So meaning that your horizontal asymptote here, note that it does not change sign, okay? So, uh, sorry, uh, look at that, I'm saying X. So your horizontal asymptote, remember horizontal line, uh, goes across like that, okay? So horizontal line looks like that. So uh, for the horizontal asymptote, uh, in this particular case, uh, you've got y is equal to q. So note the p-value changed sign, uh, but the q-value remains exactly as is. Okay, right. Now, uh, in this particular case, let's just take a, um, an example. Okay, but um, before we take an example, just uh, one other thing just to talk about quickly. Uh, remember that we also can, just like uh, we did for the parabola as well as the straight line, talk about the x-intercept. And nothing changes when it comes to the x-intercept. What happens at the x-intercept? We know, um, I don't know why my pen keeps doing this. We know uh, in this case uh, at the x-intercept, okay, this is where... Uh, um, you know, x is equal to, or rather y is equal to zero, okay? So at the x-intercept, um, okay, my pen is giving me just a little bit of an issue, okay? Uh, so at the x-intercept, we know that y um, is equal to zero, all right? So we know that y is equal to zero, okay? So you do the same for, uh, you know, the hyperbola. And obviously, we know also at the y-intercept, um, it means that x is equal to 0 as well, okay? And obviously, we'll do all the substitutions. Now, just one last thing that I want to mention before we get into an example, okay? So, what would be the domain um, for any hyperbola? Remember, we say that, well, in this particular case, what's the domain? It's where the graph exists along the x uh, axis, right? Um, in this case, it would be x is an element of real numbers. Okay, you'll see it as we, um, you know, x is an element of real numbers. 
But remember that our asymptote, this is where it does not exist, right? Uh, in the X. But X in this case, okay? Uh, um, we say that X cannot be equal to P. Remember what P is. That's our vertical asymptote, right? So it does not exist where X is equal to P. And then what about our range? Uh, for the range, we know that Y also would be an element of real numbers. Okay, so it exists everywhere except where Y is equal to Q. All right. So that is uh, how the cookie crumbles when it comes to the hyperbola. All right. So uh, quickly, let's look at our first example. All right. So let's look at our first example. So they say that uh, draw the graph of X uh, times Y, uh, which is equal to three and show all X's of symmetry. All right. So what are we going to do first? So remember, um, so what we're going to do is let's start by um, taking the graph and putting it in standard form. We've got X times Y is equals to three there. Okay. X, Y is equals to three. So let's put it in standard form. We want Y to be the subject of the formula. So we're going to just divide uh, both sides by X. Okay. So in this case, uh, we're going to say, Okay, so in that case, we know that y is equal to 3 over x. And obviously, x cannot be equal to 0 in that particular case. So now we've placed it in standard form. Okay, now um, if we want to take it to the very standard form. Okay, so this simply means y is equal to 3 over x minus 0 plus 0. Okay, so if you remember uh, what we did initially, okay, so we had that P and Q value. So what does that mean in this particular case? So what are our horizontal and our vertical asymptote? So in this case, it means that our vert vertical asymptote is going to be X is equal to zero. So that's our vertical asymptote. Okay. And our horizontal asymptote is y is equal to 0. Um, this is our horizontal asymptote. Okay. Uh, don't you just love the sound of nature? I can hear birds uh, outside chipping. Okay. Um, so uh, we've got our horizontal and vertical asymptotes, right? But um, we know also that the value of A for this particular graph is equal to, um, uh, is a positive. So we know that A is greater than zero. Okay. So in that particular case, it tells us that our graph is going to exist uh, in the positive as well as the, uh, sorry, in the first and the third uh, quadrant. Okay. Right. Now, uh, let's quickly talk about the axes of symmetry. Now, please, I want you to remember this uh, when it comes to the axes of symmetry. Um, oh, oh, by the way, I, I almost forgot the y-intercept as well as the x-intercept. You'll see here, if you take um, x is equals to 0 and y is equals to 0, we end up with... Uh, um, you know, it, it, it okay, so let, let's, let's do it, let's do it. So y-intercept, okay, what's hap what happens at the y-intercept? x would be equal to zero. Now, let's take our equation. So y is equal to three over zero. Uh, and of course, you would know whenever you divide by zero, okay, in that case, you get infinity. So uh, in that case, we know that, um, you know, we get such a big number or we even say that this is illegal. Okay, so it does not exist. So in this particular case, we're going to say, well, uh, it means that our uh, y-intercept, you know, in a way you can look at it is infinite. Okay. So, uh, 
you you actually get the same when you go for the x intercept uh you'll see that if i take the x intercept to end up with the same thing uh we know that at the x intercept okay this is where y is equal to zero uh if we take our original equation okay um uh, remember we had uh y is equal to three over x okay but we can make x subject of the formula you also get x is equal to three over y when we make y equal to zero uh, you end up with the same thing uh, three divided by zero okay now uh, in this particular case uh, of, of course uh, we know that mathematically we say well um, it does not exist or the, f the the solution does not exist why because it's infinite i mean uh, um, obviously uh, at the end of the day it's such a big number um, if we consider uh, you know zero to be a number so in this case it would mean that the answer is so big that we cannot even fi find it within the finite uh, number system so what does that mean it means that we cannot see the x intercept we cannot see the y intercept so what would this graph look like now i want to i want us to draw the graph but i want us to also look at the uh you know the axis of symmetry they did say we should show the axis of symmetry now how do you get the axis of symmetry you're going to say we say at the axis of symmetry you always will say y is equals to x plus k1 now this is for the axis of symmetry uh, axis of symmetry you know i always forget to change colors you know so that at least there's a bit of variation so uh x is equals to uh i mean y is equals to x plus k1 uh, another one would be where y is equals to minus x plus k2 just keep that in mind we'll do that uh uh, you'll see it properly in the next um you know uh, uh, example now what are we going to substitute we are going to substitute our p and our q value okay to determine the value of k1 all right so we are going to substitute our asymptotes in order to why because at the uh, uh, you know the axis of symmetry uh, your your you know the axis of symmetry would pass through the points where your uh, your asymptotes meet okay right i don't want to overcomplicate this so what are p and q value in this case we did say that p uh, is equal to zero as well as q uh, is equal to zero uh, i don't think i did i write that out uh, overtly no we didn't okay so i indicated it there but it means that our asymptotes uh, that's going to be p is equal to zero and q is equal to zero okay yeah well we had written it here uh, vertical asymptote uh, x is equals to zero and y is equals to zero now uh, to get the k value uh, of course you're going to substitute our p value and our q value which is zero uh, plus k1 and of course you'll see that k1 is equal to zero okay so it means that um, it will pass through the origin uh, but the same thing is true here. Uh, if I take that minus x uh, plus, uh, sorry, um, it should have been, should have substituted a zero there. So that's minus zero. Okay. So that's minus zero uh, plus k2. And you'll see that k2 is equal to zero. You're probably wondering, but why am I going through all of this? Um, you'll see that it's quite relevant when it uh, when you take the hyperbola um in you know in in the uh cases where p and q uh, are not zero okay right so now let's draw a hyperbola what does it look like um uh, just to keep in mind also you know just for you to see where your hyperbola passes okay i would say uh, remember we've got the equation uh, x y is equal to three okay let's choose any point i'd say uh, let's make x equal to one okay so it would pass through the point uh when x is one what would be y 
so it means that y would be 3. So our hyperbola would pass through the point uh, when x is 1 and y is 3. But let's take another one for the third quadrant. Uh, let's take x is minus 1. I'm going or in this case uh, when x is minus 1 times y which is equal to 3. So in this case you get minus 3. Okay so our hyperbola would also pass through the points um, negative 1 and negative 3. Okay right now let's draw this uh, hyperbola quickly. All right so um, there's my axes. Okay, maybe I should have used the ruler. Um, right, so I know that my axes, uh, um, uh, rather my, yeah, my x axes and my y axes uh, become my, uh, that's y and x, sorry about that. Okay, so my x and y axes then become my um, asymptotes as well all right so um, 1 and 3 so let's say that's where x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 3 let's say it passes through that point there okay so we know a is equal to 0 so we know our graph would actually um, yeah ugh, very difficult to um, okay so uh, that's where our graph would pass. And then uh, it would also pass at minus 1 and minus 3. Okay, so there's our graph there. Okay, I'm trying to be as meticulous as possible. Sorry about that. Uh, right, so this is what our hyperbola would look like, right? So I would just prefer to label those points. So that's a one and three. Uh, that's minus one and minus three. Okay. Now keep in mind, we also need to show the axes of symmetry. All right. I'll just draw them in a different color. So we said this is where uh, for my axes of symmetry, we said our values for k and uh, k1 and k2 were 0. So we end up with, uh, I didn't conclude there. So axis of symmetry would be y is equals to x. And another one would be where y is minus x. So it means this is would pass through the origin. Okay. Right. So you would have, okay, I'll make the one yellow y is equal to x all right so you would have the axis of symmetry somewhere there okay so that is our line y is equal to x and then you'd have another one okay let's make that red okay um, y is minus x so meaning when we fold the graph around those lines we know that it would actually be, um, yeah, it, 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 um, the graph would be reflections of each other. And then just one last thing uh, that I want us to do, uh, just look at, uh, in this case, uh, where are our asymptotes? We said that x is equal to zero. So your y and your x axes act as your asymptotes. So this is the line that the graph never touches. So you can see that. That's why we don't have an x-intercept and a y-intercept. Why? Because the graph will never actually touch that. Uh, you know, uh, it would be from infinity to infinity. And once again, what's our domain when it comes to this? It means that uh, x is an element of real numbers, but in this case, x cannot be equal to zero. Okay? And then also... Uh, what's our range? So this is our domain. Okay. So our range in this case would be y is an element of real numbers, uh, but also once again, y cannot be equal to zero. In fact, uh, if I remember, uh, I don't think I 
put uh, put that uh, not equal to uh, earlier on if you if i did that uh, it must have been a mistake please just uh, uh, uh just correct that okay right and so goes our first example i hope that made sense all right so what i want us to do let's take another example where p and q are uh, um you know are values that are greater than zero okay so let's look at it quickly all right now for our second example they say draw the graph of y is equals to 2 over x minus 1 and minus 2. so the first thing let's start with the x and the y intercept okay so we're going to find the x and the y intercept so find x intercept okay and y intercept right remember we're working towards drawing that graph eventually um so x intercept uh this is where y is equals to zero x intercept we know our y is equal to zero okay um so what we're going to do quickly is just to take our original equation and say well we've got uh, zero is equal to two over x minus one minus two of course we're going to solve that uh, take the minus two to the other side first okay so that becomes a positive two is equal to two over x minus one now, of course, I'm just taking my time here because, um, you know, obviously some may struggle with the mathematical gymnastics. So, of course, that's the purpose for this, uh, uh, for these lessons and for this channel, you know, to try and simplify and make things easy. So, in this case, what we're going to do is make the 2 over 1. Um, and what we are simply going to do is just cross multiply there. Right. So, what do we end up with? We end up with 2 into x minus 1 uh, which is equal to so uh, 2 times 1 so that 2 times 1 multiplied by each other that 2 times x minus 1 also multiplied by each other so this is equal to 2 and of course what i can simply do is just uh, um, divide both sides by 2 if you wanted to you can multiply inside the bracket but it's just going to be uh, longer so those cancel out okay uh so obviously two divided by two is one okay um so in this case i've got x minus one is equal to one and so x is equal to two okay so though that's my x intercept all right um you know that's our vertical asymptote uh, in a sense Right, so vertical asymptote, this is where x, uh, uh, sorry, not a vertical inter uh, asymptote, rather, uh, this is going to be our x-intercept, okay? So x-intercept, let's say we know that at the x-intercept, we will have x is equal to 2, okay? So this is where x is equal to 2 and y is 0, and then let's talk about the y-intercept, okay? Uh, I'm sure you already see that one. That's going to be quite uh, simpler. So that's 2 over x minus 1 minus 2. Okay. So now what happens at the y-intercept? Okay. Uh, sorry about that. I'll just write it underneath. So what happens at the y-intercept? So y-intercept, this is where uh, x is equal to 0 y intercept we know that x is equal to zero so i'm going to substitute for uh, i'm going to substitute zero uh, in place of x so y is equal to two over zero minus one minus two so what do we end up with uh, so we end up with two divided by negative one which is negative two negative two and so our y intercept is minus four so meaning that the graph will also pass through the points uh, zero and minus four okay so we must just keep that in mind uh, but it will also pass through the point zero uh, uh, sorry uh, two 
and 0. Okay, so it will pass through 2 and 0 as well. So 2 and 0 over there. All right, now we've uh, found out what our x-intercept and our y-intercepts are. Okay, so we know the graph will pass through that point and that point. Okay, but now what do we want to do? We want to find our asymptotes, right? So number two, um, our asymptotes. So remember, uh, okay, there, I'm, I think I'm spelling it incorrectly. Okay, so our asymptotes, ah, man, asymptotes. Okay, so in this case, how do we find the asymptotes? Remember, we go back to the original equation. Okay, we said um, um, our uh, this value over here that I'm going to circle uh, in the yellow. Okay, that represents our x at asymptote. So, so in this case, this is our vertical asymptote, right? So, our vertical asymptote is x is equal to one. Can you see that? We said it changes sign. So vertical asymptote uh, x is equal to 1. Let's not make it rocket science, right? Uh, but what about our horizontal asymptote? Our horizontal asymptote, when you go there, the original equation, you can see it's the one I'm going to circle in the red. Okay. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, I used white instead. Okay. So the one I'm, I'm circling in the red. So that's my horizontal asymptote. And I know in that case that my horizontal asymptote, that's going to be y is equal to a negative 2. It does not change sign. So please remember that it doesn't change sign. Now, let me now find also the axis of symmetry. Okay, we're going to draw the graph, but now we are finding the axis of symmetry. This is where I said there are going to be two axes of symmetry. Okay, so the first one is where y is equals to x plus k1. And what did we say? We said we must substitute our uh, p and q value. And remember what are our p and q value? It's the ones that we just found there. Right, so uh, in the place of x, I'm going to substitute 1. And in the place of y, I'm going to substitute the minus 2. Okay, so uh, so that's minus 2 is equal to x. Ah, you know, I, I keep repeating the same mistake. Uh, in the place of x, I said we substitute 1. So, um, so 1 in place of x plus k1. And let's try to solve that. So it means that our k1 value would be equal to... And negative three. All right. So it means that our one of our axes of symmetry is going to be y is equal to x minus three. Okay. Right. Let's find the next one. Okay. Let me just draw a line there. Y is equal to minus x plus k2. And then once again, we're going to substitute the very same values y is equal to minus 2, our p and q value, um, minus 2, and x is 1. But remember, we already had a negative here. Uh, so this is plus k2. Um, if we take the negative 1 to the other side, it becomes positive. So it's minus 2 plus 1, and k2 would therefore be equal to minus 1. Okay. Right, so in this case, it means our other x, uh, x of symmetry is minus x minus 1. Right, so now we've got our asymptotes. Um, let's try and draw the graph. Okay, what will the graph now look like? Okay, so I'm going to draw my... Um, x and y axis there, all right? 
Now remember, what's the first thing that I want to do? You want to go and uh, plot your uh, asymptotes. Remember we said our horizontal and vertical asymptotes. Okay, let's start with, um, you know, uh, the one on the x, the vertical. So it's at x is equal to 1. Uh, so in fact, let me just uh, choose a color there for the asymptote. So it's at x is equal to 1. So this would be, let's say that's my uh, vertical asymptote. It is at x is equal to 1. Okay. And then my, um, okay, let me just draw one there. Okay. So uh, my horizontal asymptote is at y is equal to minus 2. Okay. So it means that my horizontal asymptote is at y is equal to minus 2. So those are my asymptotes. So meaning that point there should be 1 and minus 2, okay? Now, uh, ladies and gents, I want you to please note uh, in this case, so that means, in a sense, where I've drawn my asymptotes, it means that I have now shifted my axis. It means that my first quadrant, in a sense, for this graph now becomes, uh, you know, that line there. And my, uh, sorry, my first quadrant becomes that spot over there and my uh, fourth uh, third quadrant becomes that spot and the reason I'm, I'm talking about the first and the third is because our a value is greater than zero of course if our a value was negative uh, what i mean by that is that if for argument's sake in this equation we had y is equal to say minus two over x minus one so in that case we know that our a value would be negative and as a result uh, we would deal with it appropriately, right? It would be in the second and the fourth quadrant. Now, all right, so we want to just make sure that we are drawing our graph um, as it should be. Right, now, let me go and plot. Before I, 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 I draw the graphs, okay, let's go to our um, uh, x and y intercept, right? Remember, we said x-intercept, that would be 2 and 0, okay? So where x is equal to 2 and y is 0. So if that was 1, uh, x is... Uh, um, see, I'm erasing now. Okay, x is equal to 2, so it's that spot there. So it means that our graph should cross that line over there. And then what about our y-intercept? We said that's 0. Uh, where x is equal to 0 and y is minus 4. Uh, I should have extended the line a little bit. So if that's minus 2, um, okay, let me just make a little bit of space here. Okay, so if, okay, I'm extending my line a little bit. Okay, so that's going to be 2 and, uh, sorry, 0 and minus 4. So that's minus 4 over there. All right, so now let's try and draw our graphs, okay? Um, so our graphs, going to try. Zoop, goes all the way there and it never touches, okay? Um, remember, it should pass through that point there. And in fact, let me label that point. That should be 2 and zero and um, obviously on the third quadrant okay it should also exist there and it should pass through this point okay so there's our graph okay i know it looks really quite ugly all right but uh, as you would imagine it's not really easy to to draw that graph okay but you get the point nonetheless okay so this is where this is how our graphs would look like. Okay, now, um, uh, just one last thing. We said we needed to show uh, our uh, axis of symmetry. So remember, and remember the axis of symmetry, I'm going to draw them in blue, okay? 
uh, the first one I'm going to draw it in blue and another one I'll draw it in another color in green maybe. Uh, so the axis of symmetry pass through that point, okay, that center point there. So you would have axis of symmetry passing through that point. And this would be the line y is equal to x. The gradient is positive. Uh, let me just check again. We said x minus 3. So this would be the line y is equal to x minus 3. Um, I hope it's visible. Uh, and the other one, uh, also passing through that point there. Okay. Uh, we said we'll draw it in the green. Okay. And this would be the line y is equal to minus x, I think minus 1, if I remember, yes. So y is equal to minus x minus 1. And of course, you can, uh, you know, try to find all the points that are relevant to that. Um, in fact, uh, I quite think, you know, the one mistake that I made there, uh, our y is equal to x minus 2 line should have actually passed through that point as well. Uh, but nonetheless, um, you do get the, the, the gist of it. Okay, so in this case, that's what our graph would look like. All right, so I think I want to leave it here for the hyperbola. Okay, uh, I hope that it will make sense uh, um, even in the future. So what I will also show you when we do uh, composite functions, what we'll do is that we will try to show you how to um, you know get the equation of the par uh, hyperbola when you are given the points but i want to leave it here for now okay and i'll see you guys next time uh, please don't forget to subscribe and please just continue to tell even more people recommend share tell as many people we're trying to get to 50k and um, i think we will get to that number um, but obviously because we give good value and good content all the time uh, we'll do our best. Okay. Otherwise, from me for now, I'll see you guys next time. Shop shop.